Hey everyone, so in this video I want to talk about combinations of transformations. We've actually spent the last few days talking about different kinds of transformations of functions. We looked at first uh, at translations of functions, vertical and horizontal translations. Uh, then we moved on to reflections, so vertical and horizontal reflections. And then we worked on uh, vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions. So now that we've learned about them each individually, we're going to kind of combine them into one kind of giant concept. So let's take a look at it. So if f of x is a parent function, then any transformation of f of x is given by, so the idea here is that we're going to come up with one big equation that's going to describe all the possible transformations that could be applied to f of x. And of course, we're going to use g of x. Okay, so g of x is equal to a times f of k times x minus d plus c. So those letters that I've colored in there, so the a, the k, the d, and the c, you probably recognize them from when we were talking about all the other transformations. Uh, so reflections, compressions, stretches, uh, and uh, translations. You probably recognize them for those, and in fact they're going to do the same sorts of things here. So let's see what exactly we're going to have. So you might recall that our a value that we have there in orange uh, that is going to control vertical stretches and compressions. So it still does that. So A describes vertical stretches and compressions, and it actually follows the exact same rules. So if A is larger than 1, then uh, you have a vertical stretch. If A is between 0 and 1, you have a vertical compression. Um, now, when we combine vertical stretches and compressions with the fact that we're also potentially reflecting, you might remember that when we were reflecting, we were multiplying the function by negative uh, 1, at least when it was a vertical reflection. Well, we can actually can kind of combine that in with the a value now. So the idea is that a describes vertical stretches or compressions. Again, if a is bigger than 1, you have a vertical stretch. If a is between 0 and 1, you have a vertical compression. But you can also have a vertical reflection, which also is also known as a, a reflection in the x-axis, if a is negative. So if a is negative then you also have a vertical reflection, okay? So in that case, if you say had a negative, if you had negative 3 as your a value, for example, that would describe a reflection, a vertical reflection, but since it's negative 3, it would also actually describe a vertical stretch. So it would be a vertical stretch and a vertical reflection at the same time. So likewise, we can actually combine this k value into horizontal stretches or compressions, just like before, but that actually can get combined with horizontal reflections. So remember that we said that you replaced x with negative x, essentially. right? Well, this time that negative can kind of be absorbed by the k value. So in this case, uh, it follows exactly the same rules as before. So for example, if we had a k value which was larger than 1, we would have a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over k, if it was between 0 and 1, we would have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over k. But also, if k is negative, then we have a horizontal reflection. So, for example, if uh, we had a k value of, um, say, about, say it was negative 1 over 2, then in that case, since we have a negative, we would have a horizontal reflection. But since it's negative 1 over 2, we would also have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, so that's the A and K value that describes vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions and vertical and horizontal reflections. All right, the D, the D and the C values here, they basically do the same sort of thing uh, as they did before. I mean, it's pretty uncomplicated here, but the idea is that the D value, just like before, translates the function left or right, so those are horizontal translations. So for example, if you saw X minus 3 in your equation, Right? You know that you're going to have some sort of uh, horizontal translation to the right three units. And lastly, the C value, just like before, translates the function up or down. So it deals with vertical translations. So you know that if you, at the end of your function you see a plus 5, that the function has been moved uh, up 5 units. It's been translated 5 units up. So this is combining all the different transformations into one kind of big equation, right? Now, note that this equation is written in function notation. So in class, we're going to talk about switching between uh, the function notation uh, for a transformation 
and all, uh, basically between switching between uh, function notation and the actual equation of the function, because there's a difference between the function notation and the actual equation that describes the function. So for example, in function notation alone, it doesn't tell you if you're dealing with a quadratic that's been transformed or a square root function that's been transformed, but once you know if it's a quadratic or, uh, uh, or a square root function or whatever, right, you can actually write the equation of that quadratic function or the equation of that square root function or whatever it is that you're dealing with. So we'll talk about that a bit tomorrow. Anyways, take care, guys.